Hi, Inesars. Hi, everyone. It's uh, talking from the Netherlands, our first snow of the season. So it's always uh, uh, nice, uh, nice to see. So let me get started. Um, first of all, we're talking about the uh, Inesars. Inesars goes along with an enterprise. So I would like to explain a bit on what is our enterprise context. So that might help you on some of the things I'm going to share. So when you think about the Philips, uh, you may think about uh, um, light bulbs, TV, consumer products, domestic appliances. Philips today is a healthcare company. So we do everything related with uh, medical equipment, medical sober grade. So we work in uh, MRI machines. We have people doing AI um, data algorithms to detect or to help pathologists to detect the tumors. But we also write, for example, the embedded firmware of a toothbrush. So that creates a big diversity, a lot of uh, different small companies within the company and creating these uh, opportunities to have a strong collaboration using, using uh, Inosource. Let me share a bit of our journey. Um, I'm going to talk about DevEx and I was glad to uh, listen to the presentation from Matt and from Thomas. I, I see some core knowledge that we are going to share and maybe opportunities to exchange and learn from each other. I always see Inosource as a way or an excellent way to knowledge, to share knowledge and to learn from each other. So why DevEx? Why developer experience? Um, in our case, when we um, run an initiative like uh, the one we are uh, doing, we want to make it uh, with some foundation on, on research or to make it a bit uh, quantifiable. So in our case, when we talk about DevEx, we are relying on a study from Nicole Forsgren. Uh, you have the reference on the slides, which essentially proves that there is a strong correlation with a definition of DevEx, which is related with uh, shortened feedback loops, um, a low cognitive load, and uh, staying in the flow as the uh, definition of DevEx with business outcomes, both at your individual level, team level, and organizational level. So we use that assumption, that working assumption and that study to build our own initiative. So um, we uh, definitely try to go in that direction with uh, Philips. So what it means DevEx, so how do we assess what is the maturity in a developer experience uh, in our company? So taking that study, we surveyed all our 6,000 developers. So we're a, a big company and many different products. And we asked them using the same industry-based um, research questions. Uh, the goal was that we could compare, we could benchmark them what is the situation in Philips with, the, with what is the situation in the industry. So we could uh, uh, identify both things that maybe we were stronger and things that maybe we were uh, lacking behind. So in this case, uh, the study showed that we were having uh, significant gaps compared to the industry in two big areas. One was flow state and one was cognitive load. In other words, our engineers, they had more difficulties to stay in the flow to do the job and they had to uh, deal with a higher cognitive load for the day to day. So what can we do with that? Um, we made an improvement plan, of course. We were an initiative, so we learn, we assess, and then you know you think these are the gaps, this is the plan I'm going to follow. Um, in our plan, essentially we were planning to use, or we are using our internal development platform to address some of the identified gaps. So we would like that our the DevEx from our people can be improved in those areas by using our internal platform. Essentially, we focus on uh, uh, three uh, different areas. So we wanted to provide a better uh, catalog of uh, available software services. We will also want people to be able to publish and to share their own um, uh, software assets. We want to have some better documentation, better technical documentation to use some of those assets. And definitely, we are betting uh, really high on self-service automation. So with these areas, we are expecting that the uh, developers to do the day-to-day, -day, they need a lower cognitive load in their own teams, and they have a better and a faster uh, feedback loop, and they can stay in the flow because they will follow uh, better documentation and self-service uh, when possible. So. Why we think Inosource is a DevEx or developer experience catalyst? Uh, let me start with uh, IDP. So um, again, I would like to use some of the standard literature in the, in the industry, in this particular case, in topologies you might be familiar with. But essentially, when you're talking about uh, um, internal developer platform, you have to think 
that that particular team is operating as a platform team. So the whole idea or the whole value for that particular team is by enabling, by helping uh, stream aligned teams. And stream aligned teams in the terminology from team topologies are the ones that are really building the products. In our case, the ones building the software for an MRI machine. That MRI machine will go into hospital and help people. So our role as internal platform team is to help them, right? That's that has to be quite clear in the definition of your of your team. What risk do you face when you become a platform team? You can go into speculative roadmaps, you get a bit more detached from the end result. So you have your uh, communication channels with those teams where you are doing your best, but uh, you may you may feel a bit uh, detached and you may start taking decisions yourself without really thinking first on the stream aligned team. So that creates a risk. And I think every platform team should be aware of that risk and do something to mitigate. So I will explain what we are doing in our case. So first of all, how does it look like our um, portal to the internal development platform. We are using an open source based solution uh, backstage. And in that solution, we are essentially providing three services to our people. Number one is a catalog. So everyone can post or can publish their own software assets and make them available to every engineer in Philips. You have also technical documentation you can treat as code. I was hearing from the talk from Matt that they are also doing the same documentation as code. We really believe is a great thing and, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, good things to say about that. And number three is the scaffolding or software template capability from the solution. In this case, for example, you can see some of our examples like uh, creating open source repositories. So you provide a very easy way for people following self service and automation to create an asset that will eventually be available uh, for others. So those are the three main pillars of our portal solution. So <laughs> why we think you know, this for me is the key of, I hope that this is the key of my my, my uh, talk today, something that maybe you can take as a, as a takeaway. So Inesource as a catalyst. And um, um, when you use Inesource in your uh, internal development platform, you essentially are creating an, an open space to collaborate with your people. As we said, we have a risk that we can be speculative. Or we can maybe not very well understand what uh, they, they need or they want. So if you have like a real sharing in a source, a strong principle that everything you're doing as a platform team is exposed to the community, is not only available, they can, of course, you see, they can also uh, contribute. They can share their feedback. That's a, a, a good way to mitigate that risk that we were doing. For example, we have a, a totally fully open backlog. So anyone can come to our roadmap or our backlog and say, hey, guys, you should be working on this. Or, hey, guys, even more interesting, I'm interested in working on this. So when you take a look to our own backlog, right now, more than 20% of the intake that we are getting is coming directly from some of the stream aligned teams. And that, that helps you in particular in ideas like uh, or, or, or challenges like prioritization. So as the, as the description from a, a previous presentation was, your backlog typically has many things to what you can do. So if you allow people to focus on the things that are valuable for them and you have visibility, you have a, a better idea of what is, what is a priority, what, has, what is important that you work, right? And number three, and uh, I'm a big believer of this in all aspects of software engineering, promote a zero waste culture. So if you allow people to take one of their existing pain points, build a contribution and fix it, you are creating that culture of not waiting because waiting means work in progress with inefficiency, delays, you know, it has a lot of anti-patterns. So reducing waste eventually, which is uh, in essence weight, it, it leads into a, a better software engineering uh, practice. Moving on, a couple of examples, dashboards, every team they want their own dashboard. So it's always uh, uh, something that uh, if you try to create a dashboard, oh, this one will, will be available or will be fitting all needs. Um, I bet it won't. So uh, it's a great opportunity for in source contributions. That's what we did. So now we have a, a particular team very interested. They started something. Some of the teams joined and they created if something which was helping at least a subset of our organization. That was a really interesting example of uh, this uh, working in practice. And number two, our tailor runners, one of you know our key service or first uh, one of the key services that we provide to our community 
is a GitHub runners to everyone for our environment. And we were um, providing, or we are providing some standard runners that are available to uh, everyone. But at the same time, we were gathering demand from different teams thinking or, or saying that they would enjoy to have some tailored hardware software for their own particular needs. So we created a model where those people that could contribute, they could help us to increase the available fleet of uh, available runners. And with one of those contributions, we created, for example, runners tailored to a particular team. They could help them improve their own build times like 10 times. And at the same time, because we follow any source principles, they get they don't get some of the burden to maintain that. That's still part of the platform. So we are really going in the direction of that win-win, that we can uh, increase the value of what we generate and they can enjoy that value while they don't have to increase their own uh, cognitive load, right? That's, as I remember from the very beginning, has to be always one of the principles uh, that we follow. So these are a couple of examples. Um, also, in a source and community, we've, we've, we've listened that uh, over the last talks as well, a key aspect. So let me talk what we are doing from a community perspective. Again, a couple of examples. Global in source events. So when we are launching this uh, um, IDP and working with all the different product lines in Philips, you know, it's something that uh, you need to help them. You need to create awareness. You need to build that community of users and practitioners and eventually they will become contributors. So things that we did last year, we ran face-to-face -face events in all our major uh, software hubs. We ran uh, hackathons, uh, hard zone workshops. We provided the keynotes. So essentially we're meeting people at their site and helping them to both get started and um, start using some of the platform services and at the same time sharing some of the key things about good practices in, in software, for example. So that was uh, that was really nice. Also a good opportunity to, to see all the great people we have in the company and to meet them face to face. So we were to India, we were to China, we were to um, Netherlands, US and uh, Brazil. What else? Um, local, uh, I also liked uh, a couple, you know, that, that difference between a global community and a local community. Both of them, I think they complement each other really well. So this is an example of uh, opportunity where we use a local meetup that we have here in the area where we created uh, a workshop to start from the scratch using some of the backstage based services. And we created an open source workshop that we call it automate all the things where in a nutshell in two, three hours, you are able to set up everything and to start your own sandbox and to start experimenting how you can create these, um, you know, IDP type experience for your developers. As a reminder, this everything we're doing is in a source. So uh, every team in our company, they have the potential to create their own internal local flavor of the, that uh, um, uh, platform engineering services. So for example, they can create their own scaffolders to onboard people, to create new projects, to uh, automate the use of a particular tool they have. So we are always playing with these global and local aspects where you have something global that is available for the whole company and you put a wide tools for people to tailor and to customize to their own uh, uh, team level needs. Okay, so this is my wrap up, my last slide. And uh, I, I hope that I, I share with you how developer experience can uh, improve your business outcomes how um, your internal development platform can we uh, can streamline the developer experience by providing you uh, automation, self-service, better documentation, and eventually a community of practice. And how, in particular, and as I said, this is my key message: in a source practices is a great way that your IDP, your platform team, can really prevent the risk of becoming a speculative roadmap-based uh, uh, delivery and really work together with the Streamline teams and help them to contribute. And, uh, uh, you know, among both, uh, really be able to uh, have happier software developers uh, in your company that eventually they will become more productive developer uh, developers for your company. So that's my uh, last slide. And uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, time for Q&A and uh, dialogue. Thanks.